It's uh, 6.30 in the morning and I'm literally pulling equipment out of bags that we just got back from Australia 36 hours ago and moving it into other trucks to go on another trip today. So into the Bighorn Mountains we go. And I have a new member of the team here today. You may recognize him. Bonjour. Richard Giordano. Richard and his wife Ashley have been traveling the world for the last few years, and we're stoked to have him along on our next couple adventures. My role on this trip in the beautiful tundra, um, I'll be shooting some stills and filming a little bit. Yes. Out. I'm a sucker for stuff that shows up right in photos. My buddy Eric Frankie will be joining us as well. I'm Eric Frankie. I'm going to be the navigator on this trip. I guess I'm working maps and directions and all that kind of stuff. And I've known Clay boy, six years now, I think. I'm just a friend. I've got some goodies for you. The final member of this small team is Will, who I've given the role of lead camera to for the first time. He's a little nervous, but I think he'll be fine. So today we are going to Wyoming, and my role for this expedition is to be lead camera. I'm going to be working with Richard. He's going to teach me some things. Hopefully I can teach him some things too. It's a pretty unique and fun trip for XO. We haven't done a trip like this before. This is one truck, four guys, uh, for three days. So usually we have redundancy in our trucks. Not this time, we're on our own with one truck, which is a great way to do it. You can do it this way. Um, is it best to have two vehicles? Of course, but that's not always an option. The objective of this trip is to explore a mountain range closer to home and known to very few, the Bighorns. Overlander is presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. In association with Patriot Campers. And in part by Magpul, apparel and hard goods. Equipped. Warm. Go prepared. CBI off-road fabrication. Max Tracks. Take the easy way out. Icon Vehicle Dynamics. And the power of Red Arc. 30 minutes from home and cruising down the interstate, a quick glance at the gauges catches the speed and tack needles fall, then instantly come back up, igniting a Christmas tree of lights behind the glass. It's obviously an electrical issue. A quick inspection reveals a loose ground. With the ground tightened up, the truck is running fine, but the lights are still triggered. So we head into Livingston, Montana to attempt to clear the codes. The code reader fails to clear it, and so does the subsequent reset sequences we know about. It will simply have to be cleared by a dealer at another time. The only real problem here is that the traction control lights are still on, indicating that we have lost its critical off-road function if we need it. Let's see if it'll Toyota heal itself. Toyota heal. We will go on without it. Three hours later, we cross into Wyoming and start the ascent into the Bighorns. We, as a crew, go through our first drone startup sequence. In minutes, we are airborne, and Richard takes the camera gimbal controls for the first time and totally kills it. So uh, on the way up here, I remember that I have been in here to some degree, but more on the northern end. And driving up this road, it's just coming back. And this place is amazing. We just climb straight up out of the, the valley here. And if I look off to the west, you can see the Beartooth Mountains. That's the tallest mountain range in Montana. To the south, it drops into the plains of Wyoming. 
And then right here, we're climbing up into the Bighorn Mountains. And some of the mountains are over 12,000 feet. Uh, and they're even taller than Montana's tallest mountain, Granite Peak, at 12,799. We don't really know where we're going. And that's kind of the nerve wracking part of it, but also kind of fun part of it too. So definitely gonna get into camp tonight at dark. That's okay. I'll find a nice spot, get a camp set up, get dinner rolling, and see what tomorrow brings. All right, we're about to make uh, Clay's famous uh, grilled cheese and ham sandwiches. Um, it's made of. <laughs> made with bread, one of the three loaves of bread he made us by. American cheese, ham, some butter substance, and then a special uh, special blend of tomato soup if we want to actually make that and create a whole bunch of dishes for ourselves. If not, just a frying pan. Hey, I'll take dishes any time, especially to complete the best gluten and dairy rich meal known to man. It doesn't take long to see how a crew is going to get along. And this crew is looking to be a great fit. And the future is looking bright. A lot of the roads have been closed off for hunting season. Bow season has started. So that's okay. A lot of guys out here enjoying bow season. So we just got to find the roads that are open. And Hunt Road, Hunt Mountain Road, is looking to be like a good 20 mile road that we could explore and it goes along a ridge. So we'll probably be in the snow today. Got some coffee in the morning, sun's rising, and we're heading off to the Big Bighorn Mountains, maybe. Hey, are we going to the Bighorn Mountains, guys? Are we going to the Bighorn Mountains? Yeah, yeah. we're in them. Here. We're in the Big Horde Mountains. I know what's going on. It's a rule of ours. Every time there's somebody backing up, you got a guy out watching. It'll save you a headache down the road. It'll save you eventually. Hunt Road starts just 15 minutes up the road from camp. And turning onto the dirt reveals the snow is already starting to melt and make the road a slick, muddy mess. An air down is a must. I know we talk a lot about tire pressures because it's a big deal. It makes a massive difference in traction and ride quality on a vehicle. You'll see a lot of people say, oh, you need to air down. Oh, I can air down way past this point. Oh, 20 pounds, 25 pounds is nothing. I can go all the way down to 14 pounds and stuff. Yes, you absolutely can, but a tire, any tire, is designed with a certain amount of threshold for air down. It's designed to be run at a certain PSI window. If you go past that window, like when you're dropping below 20 pounds, you're really getting into a spot where it's beyond the engineering of the tire to run like that a lot. So if you need that kind of pressures in extreme situations, by all means do it. But just know that you're quite possibly degrading the life of the tire by running it at that such a low pressure. As soon as you're out, air them back up to a better pressure, and your tires are gonna last a lot longer. We select 28 pounds of pressure for this road. This pressure allows enough flex to help the tread clean itself out. And it gives us the ability to run very short stints of paved road further in the day without allowing the tire to build up too much heat, which can also degrade a tire's integrity if not monitored closely. Eric seems to be having a great time behind the wheel. How could you not in a place like this? But driving is not the only fun we're going to have today. So, it's hunting season, which means upland bird. So we decided we were gonna bring the 22. Let me show you my ultimate truck gun. How we carry this may not be legal in all 50 states, but this is legal in Wyoming and Montana. I have a little rifle here. It is my Tactical Solutions rifle with the Magpul Backpacker Takedown and a Vortex little red dot sight on top and a Surefire Suppressor. 
it shoots a 22 caliber and I have subsonic rounds and it shoots about I don't know a little faster than a pellet gun one of the cool things about this is the stock carries three extra mags in the back so you can have or two boxes of ammo I carry three three ten rounders plus one in the gun so you can have 40 rounds Isn't that sweet have you ever shot one of these yeah it's a Well, here, you gotta shoot it. All right. You good there? Nice little trigger on it. Put the red on it, shoot it. Oh, you got it. Pull the action back just a little bit. This comes up. Let's go grouse up. This area is proving to be quite diverse and vast. Ridge roads run everywhere and you feel like you're on top of the world. But it's funny how something so small can take you right back down to reality. A superior predator with a superior weapon is about to be stumped by one of nature's lowest common denominators, the grouse. Okay, this is like every hunting show you've ever watched. It requires lots of whispering. Slow doors, grouse did it. opportunity user error I missed aiming for the head good clean ethical kill if you can hit him in the head and usually if you miss you miss by a long shot so put rounds all the way around him but he's one lucky grouse today with the promise of grouse in the area and daylight growing thin we decide to make camp and go for one last walk to see if we can find us some dinner what are we about to go do? We're gonna go take a little walk through the woods, try and find another grouse, and hopefully no bears. Carry three of these. Three rounds of snake shot or bird shot. That would have been perfect for getting a grouse. Carry three of those and three extra rounds of business, all business. So just checking regulations real quick and then be on our way. Oh man, probably forgot to tell Grizzlies have not been officially reported in this area. However, numbers have been steadily on the rise in this ecosystem. Now, I'm not an expert, but I have seen my fair share of bear sign in my years in the woods. And this track doesn't look like your everyday black bear to me. But all in all, what I'm really trying to do is just make Richard nervous. It's a little eerie in the uh, burnt out forest, but there's, there's no, no sign of life. <laughs> Yeah. There's no sign of life, and honestly, it feels like there's less visibility in there than there is in, in the live growth. Everything just looks black in there. Frankie was saying that he was walking through and he was noticing there's no squirrels chirping, there's no... There's nothing. And we're looking at the weather, and I, I agree with him. I mean, it's dead out here. Nothing's making noise, the birds aren't making noise, and that could be an indicator of a storm coming in. Yeah, it's pretty new. Should we 
fires. Should we take it out to the ranger station? Let's at least pack it out for sure. Sneaking through the woods, there's like nothing better. Like I can even just walking through, hunting grouse, just listening, watching. It's real quiet out here. It's it's just like you feel your I don't know. So rejuvenating, like you feel yourself coming back. You're like, oh yeah. Like a walk in the woods is a really good thing. I need to do a lot more of it. Got my boys back at home. And I gave them a chore. Hunt, hunting season is coming up. It's like a couple weeks away for us. And I said, every day when you come home from school, you have to build a fire before you can watch, before you can do anything. You have to come home, build a fire in the fire pit in the backyard. Each one of them. So since I issued that homework, I ought to do it too. So I'm gonna practice building the fire from the base of the bottom using just uh, cotton balls and striker. I have a lot of fun doing it. It's one of my favorite things to do. So we get to making the right wood and then get fire going. Making a fire is like anything else, I guess. It's a combination of the right materials, mixed with the right skills, and put together in the right order. And with a little care, it won't be long before you have a fire. I think the same goes for building a team, or putting together a trip, or realizing a dream. It's in a lot of ways like what we're doing here, on this trip. It's all part of building something bigger than any one of us. Hopefully, it will continue to bring a little light into the world. <laughs> what am I doing in here? What do you think I'm doing in here? It's cold out. Heated seats. Look out. Booyah. First That's the other method for starting a fire. So, what do you do? <laughs> Either the sun will burn it off or the system's moved in and we're gonna have this all day. I have no idea. Having the sun come up and burn it up, dry up the road would be good. Gumbo that's in this area is like, you don't mess with it. You need like snow chains and stuff to get through it. You ready to rock? I'm ready to rock. You wanna drive? I wanna drive. Oh, sweet. Who's been driving? I can't even touch the pedals. Excuse me while I... Will this be your first time driving the Tundra? Driving this Tundra? Yeah. It is, yeah. Don't crash it. We have very little information on the road ahead, and it's looking to be a bit more than we bargained for, especially with that pesky traction control light not being able to be reset. Who says you can't take a full-size truck somewhere? I like when somebody's spotting for me is all I have to do is listen listen to their directions and follow them and uh, I don't have to think I just have to follow the directions and usually uh, it's no problem get the truck where we need to go we'll see if that works out here we were expecting a dirt road loop around and uh, things just got a little bit more interesting It's gonna be a challenge, but I think we can do it. Yeah. 
This section is definitely showing us what the truck is capable of and where its limits are. I'll just say by this point here, every skid plate has been utilized. Well, there's multiple routes. This one is the main trail, but it has gotten to the point where it's, this is, we're as far out as we are with only one truck. Nosing into this is not the problem. It's when we go out, if we can get out and not get bogged into this, that trailer is gonna be almost nearly vertical for a second. And I don't know if that nose, nose box of the trailer is gonna contact the top of the peak horse just to back. And it's such an extreme angle. Find another route? Find another route. I just, you just have to play it cautious. Just getting the truck backed up is proving challenging. very simple stuff but we've just uh, high centered up on the rear bell housing on the rear diff just enough to not let anything rip. Remember that point about always having a backup spotter that I mentioned just earlier? Yeah, this is why. That's my bad. I should probably heed my own advice. Who's driving this thing? Not you, Frank. Right now we're experiencing the weakness of a long wheelbase vehicle. You might be thinking, oh, my Jeep could do that far better, or my Tacoma, or the 4Runner, or whatever. You'd be right. Uh, a long wheelbase vehicle that isn't lifted incredibly high struggles in terrain like this. That is a known weakness of this vehicle. We knew it when we went to build it. Uh, where it shines is everywhere else. Uh, comfort, ride, touring, you can be in it all day. It hauls all our gear. We're also seeing another weakness with having to tow a trailer. Trailers bring uh, complications with them. That's a compromise that we're also willing to make because look at everything else it does provide us with awesome campsite, a wonderful galley, all the water. So I think the thing to take away from this is you gotta figure out what compromises you wanna make in a vehicle and what strengths you want in it and eventually it'll narrow you down into the type of platform that you should have. I think this will be the first time driving the Tundra out in the wild. In the wild. In the wild. <laughs> so hopefully I don't crash it. Actually this will be the first time too where I'm like actually like crawling.
power. But right now, I got it kind of in a stuck position. We don't have enough power to move it forward, so. It's been a while since we've winched. This is one of those things when you need a winch. This is absolutely the time. It's not a traction issue, it's a power issue. But really what, the, what we're dealing with here is a heavy truck and too high of gears for this condition. This just so happens to be Eric, Richard, and Will's first time having a part in a winch recovery. Nothing better than field training, I say. Pretty awesome. I now see the purpose okay. of a winch. Yeah. Frankie, what do you think of winching? I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is dope. Send it. Yeah, nice work. Well, there you have it. Over the next couple hours, we make our way out to the completion of a great weekend trip. One that gave a few of us some more tools and experience that just might come in handy for the bigger things ahead. Stay tuned as we push on toward new horizons. <laughs>